Hi, I'm Blair, and welcome to Cellar Notes. Today we're going to talk about craft beer. Because we're talking beer, we've got Roger from Kenrick. Roger, thanks for coming by. And I'd like to introduce Todd Ewing. He's from Odell Brewing in Colorado. Todd, thanks, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, as I said, you uh, work for Odell Brewing out of uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, I believe. Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, about your past in the business, and, and what got you to this point? Sure. Uh, well, I've been with uh, Odell Brewing for about six years now, uh, and I started uh, in Fort Collins. Uh, we have our own, uh, we call it wholesale, but we essentially run our own uh, distributor within the city of Fort Collins. Mm. And uh, I started off as a representative that just sold Fort Collins. And I came from the bar industry in Fort Collins, so I had a lot of good contacts within the town, and uh, it made for an easy fit uh, moving over to the brewery side. I did that for about three years, and then I uh, moved down into uh, Denver, Colorado, and I basically had part of Denver and the whole southern half of uh, Colorado, and I did that for a couple years. And uh, May of 2010, we uh, decided we wanted to launch Minnesota as our ninth state. And I said I would love to uh, to go up to the uh, Great White North and uh, <laughs> landed in Minnesota, and I've been happy here ever since. Well, we're glad you're here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and let's you know, we said craft beer. Sure. Maybe you can tell me uh, what what is a craft beer? Well, we uh, we generally categorize craft beer as uh, something that uses all malt and doesn't use any adjuncts uh, for anything other than enhancement of the beer. That means no rice, no uh, nothing added that uh, that is added for the purposes of uh, making the beer more cheaply. Uh, when you do see uh, brewers that uh, add some adjuncts to their beer uh, it, and they're, they are craft beers, those are those are strictly beers that are those are strictly adjuncts that are used to enhance flavors to tease out some nuances that maybe uh, maybe you wouldn't have been able to without them. So that's basically what we what we mean when we say craft beer. And so there's no filler. No filler whatsoever. <laughs> exactly. That's a great way to put it. Is there, any, is there any kind of size limitation on what's defined as a craft beer? You know, years ago uh, we tried. They tried to play the game of uh, micro brew versus macro right. brew. But it became very difficult to start saying, you know, what is the largest, smallest brewery? And that's why we changed the terminology from, uh, from a microbrewery to a craft brewery. So there's not a limit on how large uh, okay. a brewery can be. Uh, Sam Adams, for example, is the world's largest craft brewer. And they're going to soon do over 2 million barrels a year. So. Um, there and, and so they're firmly uh, a craft brewery. That's a lot of craft. It is a lot of craft. It certainly <laughs> is. It certainly is. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your your brewery, uh, your brewery itself, the sure. Odell's in, in Colo Odell in Colorado? Yeah, you bet. Um, well, we're uh, Odell Brewing Company, and the reason that why we uh, are called Odell Brewing is uh, we were started by three people: Doug Odell, his wife Win Odell, and uh, Doug's sister Corky Odell. Um, we were started back in 1989. Uh, we were the uh, second uh, craft brewery to open in Colorado after uh, Boulder Brewing Company, which is now Rockies Brewing Company. Um, and Doug and Wynn were living on the West Coast. Uh, Doug had uh, studied brewing in college. He worked out at uh, Anchor Steam in San Francisco for a little while. Uh, but uh, in the 80s, they were looking for a place where they could start their own brewery. Um, uh, Corky lived in Fort Collins and really sold him on it. Uh, great water in Fort Collins. It's a college town, Colorado State University. My alma mater is uh, is there, and uh, it just seemed very ripe uh, to start a to uh, to start a brewery. So they came out in the mid '80s. I think '86 is when they moved into town, and it took them a few years to get everything together. But we opened our doors back in 1989, and uh, things have been going very well ever since. One interesting thing is that uh, for the first six years that we were a brewery, we didn't do any bottles. Uh, we were a draft-only oh. brewery. So unless you uh, came to the brewery and got a growler, you couldn't drink it at home. So, uh, but uh, eventually we, we realized that people wanted to drink it at home. So uh, in 96, we put in a bottling line. And uh, our first uh, beer that we bottled was uh, 90 Schilling. Uh, you mentioned 90 Schilling. Maybe we'll talk about 
the, the style. Sure. The beer we have Absolutely. out here in front of us. Maybe start down at that end. Okay. Get 90 showing. Yeah. It's a it's a beer that's uh, that's very hard to categorize actually, uh, and and I I feel that way in 2011. So when uh, Doug came up with this recipe in the 1980s, I think it must have really been uh, <laughs> dynamic. Uh, but uh, you know we we've entered it into beer competitions as a brown ale as a. Uh, American Amber as a German style alt beer. Hmm. Uh, in truth, it's sort of a hybrid. It's basically got a, uh, a um, Scottish ale malt build with an English bitter hop build. So it's got uh, all that nice sweetness that you would expect out of a Scottish ale and just enough hops to give it a crisp finish. Uh, but uh, it does make it a, a beer that's very hard to categorize. Five Barrel Pale Ale, uh, it, it's an English style pale ale, uh, it's, it's really a, a wonderfully balanced pale, but uh, we named it Five Barrel Pale Ale and a lot of people who aren't familiar with our brewery don't, you know, don't really understand that, but we have a, a five barrel pilot system at our, at our brewery, it's one tenth the size of our commercial brew house, uh, but it allows us to uh, make a lot of brews and not, make that and not make that much total beer, so it gives us a lot of flexibility and we use that uh, as part of our culture of the brewery for three things. One, we do develop new recipes on it. So when we have a new beer coming out, we uh, will do several iterations. I think when our, we brought out our IPA in 2007, we did about eight or nine different versions of, uh, of the IPA and everyone tasted the beer after, after the first one and said, well, I want it to be more this or less <laughs> that, more, the, you know, a little hoppier, a little less malty. Uh, and then the brewers took another crack at it and, uh, and refined and refined and refined their recipe uh, until we got exactly the beer that we wanted. Um, the second reason that, uh, that it's important is we also brew uh, a lot of beers on there that have nothing to do with, uh, with developing recipes. And because we're a very um, hands-on brewery, we don't run any automation, it's very, very handcrafted. Um, it can be a little monotonous for our brewers who've been doing it for a long time. Uh, to get a consistent 90 shilling or to get a consistent five barrel pale ale, everything has to be the same every time you do it. So we've, we've got very talented brewers and the five barrel pilot system allows us to um, let them stretch the uh, artistic side of brewing a little bit more. So we've had everything from uh, wheat wines, which is a wheat-based barley wine, to malt liquor uh, on, our, <laughs> on draft at our tap room. Uh, and that, it's, it's really fun for the brewers. And then the third and probably most important um, uh, reason that uh, the fiber pilot system is, is a big part of our culture at Odell Brewing is that everyone who uh, works at the brewery brews on it. And everybody's done it at least once. And depending on how, uh, how good you are at, uh, at brewing, you can either write your own recipe and just do it yourself and maybe grab a brewer to, uh, to help you. Um, you can sit in with the brewer or you can just assist a brewer on it. But essentially, because everybody does it, most people have done it many more than, many more than one time. Um, there's a lot of working parts that make that we have to have to make us a successful business. I'm here in Minnesota. We have people in our tap room. We have people in our accounts receiving. We have people in our reception. There's a lot of people that don't have to brew beer to make us a brewery, <laughs> but the five barrel pilot system really reminds us of what we are here to do, and that is make and drink great beer. I think it's great you uh, uh, listen to customers and tweak beers here and there. I want a little more of this, yeah. a little more of that. that that's, that's great. Uh, let's move on to the IPA, the, India Pale Ale. The India Pale Ale, yeah. Uh, this is a fantastic beer. As I alluded to earlier, uh, it was a beer we brought out uh, in 2007, and uh, we really did refine that recipe uh, uh, very, uh, very um, fine-tuned uh, uh, on that five barrel pilot system. And when it came out, uh, first GABF, we uh, entered it in, it won the gold medal, and the first World Beer Cup, mm. we entered it in, won the uh, gold medal for American style IPA. So um, it really bore the fruit of, uh, of that, uh, of that uh, honing process. Um, one thing interesting, not only about the IPA, but the five barrel pale ale, uh, the red ale, uh, these beers are, we use full flowered hops, and we dry hop and hop back all three of these beers. So those are uh, basically two technical brewing terms for post-boil hop additions. And those are hop additions that don't add any bitterness to the beers. Uh, these beers uh, do have, uh, to varying degrees, uh, some 
some sharp bitterness, but adding full flower hops post boil gives a lot of aroma and it rounds out the flavor uh, of the hops. Because hops are the main bittering ingredient that we use as, uh, as brewers, uh, it doesn't mean that they only have to add bitterness. When, um, and, you, and you brought up the hops, when, when we're talking about uh, brewing, yes. making beer, you're essentially talking three ingredients, four with the water, sure. which is great in Fort Collins. <laughs> yes, it's very um, good water in Fort Collins. But let's talk a little bit more in depth about the hops. Yeah, uh, you, are there, uh, you talked about flowered hops pre-boiling. Are there different hops that you use for different beers? Absolutely. Where, where do you get your hops and, uh, and what we, do you use? We get most of our hops from the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, there are uh, hundreds of different kinds of hops. And, uh, and, and hops... Um, they don't. We, they don't serve the same. Uh, they don't serve the same uh, role in uh, beer as grapes do in wine. But there is that uh, that amount of nuance and difference. And uh, hops have uh, what are called alpha acid contents. And and that uh, the higher the alpha acid content in a hop, the more bittering capability it has. But uh, on top of that, you can use hops that'll give you more uh, floral notes, more perfumey notes. You can have hops that give you more citrusy notes. You can use hops that'll get you give you more earthy notes. Um, and in none of our beers do we use just one style of hops. Mm. Uh, we use uh, seven different uh, hops in our five barrel pale ale. We use eight different uh, styles of hops in our uh, in our IPA. So. You're right uh, when you say there's only four ingredients in beer, which is water, malt, uh, yeast, and hops. But uh, the different combinations that you can use make uh, an infinite number of uh, iterations for beer. And there's, there's so much more, as you said, there's so much more to hops than just making it bitter. I mean, exactly. I mean, it really adds different flavors, and it can take you from, from one side, for, from, from one end to the other. Ex exactly right. And, uh, and the IPA... Uh, Specifically, uh, we're using uh, some very aggressive American style hops, and so you get a very citrusy characteristic out of the nose, and, uh, and also just uh, shades of pine or juniper as well. Um, we've talked about uh, some of the beers that we, we actually carry in the stores, but what's new? What's, uh, what, what, what are we going to su be give surprised us, with? What's, what's coming us, up? Give up your secret. All right, all right. <laughs> you, you beat me down, I'll, 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 I'll tell you. We've, we're actually very, very excited. We've got a brand new beer uh, coming out, and it's our very first double IPA, and it's called Mercenary. And uh, it, it is a beer that uh, we, we love hops. Uh, as you can tell, we, we, we brew with a lot of them, but this beer really takes it to the next level. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a 9.3% 9, 9 alcohol uh, double IPA. And uh, if we pour it, should we pour it? Let's, Let's see, see what, what it looks, looks like. like. I think that's a great idea. Now double IPA, so there's obviously more more hop in there but and more malt too, more, right? more so malt more as well the yeah alcohol content that, and that's right and uh, and and the amount of uh, of alcohol that's in a beer um, really does depend on uh, how much malt you use because that's what gives the yeast uh, food uh, in the end uh, to turn the uh, to turn <coughs> excuse me um, to turn the the uh, the sugar into alcohol. Um, as you can see there, it's very, very hazy, mm -hmm. and that is because this is our this is our first beer. We're actually in the pr in the process of uh, of becoming a completely filter free brewery. This is the first beer we used a centrifuge for instead of a uh, filter. So we were able oh. to leave in all the essential oils that we uh, pull out when we dry hop and we hop back our beers. So you've got that very, very hazy note in there, and. Uh, a tremendous amount of aroma, and that's what we're shooting for. We we want to have all our beers be very aromatic, but this really takes it to the next level. We're using some brand new uh, hop varietals in this beer that give a, a a very big tropical fruit notes to this beer, um, and it really is a fantastic beer. It's our very first four pack. Fantastic. Um, what's what's the the future as, as you see it for uh, Odell Brewing? Uh, I, I, Expansion plans? Do you want to become the biggest, baddest brewer in the state? We, uh, we don't want to be the biggest, uh, but we would like to be uh, one of the best. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, American craft brewers out there, and, uh, and we, we love all our, all our friends and partners in the craft brewing industry, but we're striving for quality. We, uh, we, we did do a, a big expansion to our brewery, which allowed us to come out here to Minnesota, uh, and we finished that in early 2010. We added Minnesota as our ninth state uh, in 2011. 2011 will add Idaho as our 10th state, 
But uh, right now, we're really a, a Mountain West uh, company. We're not available uh, anywhere on the West Coast. We're not available anywhere east of Minnesota. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're more focused on uh, brewing and sharing great beers than we are on becoming the biggest brewery out there. Very nice. And your beers are, are excellent. It's, it's, thank you, you for saying so. <laughs> Appreciate that. Roger, I want to thank you for coming out and helping oh, us out today. Thanks, Blake. Todd, it was a pleasure. Blake, from thanks Odell for having Brewery. me. We really appreciate you being here. And thanks for watching Seller Notes.